you might use the word variety to sum up artist Ida Lou Boulard's life. Born in Paris, she is a first-generation Holocaust survivor. She later moved to New York City, but recently left that environment for the rural Adirondack region of upstate New York. And her paintings reflect her life. They're created in a wide variety of styles and commemorate the joys and sorrows that color her world. The artist who painted this picture says she barely escaped the sad fate of these children. In 1944, Nazis discovered more than 40 Jewish children hiding in an orphanage in Isieux, France, just a few miles away from where the artist was in hiding with her family. Decades later, she painted this scene, imagining how the children felt when they were sent to a concentration camp. And I portrayed a lot of their fears in their eyes. Artist Ita Boulard was born and raised in France and was a child during the Second World War. I'm a Holocaust survivor. My, my family, most of my family on my father's side was sent to the crematory. So um, you wonder a lot about people and human beings. And you wonder where the line stops, where they stop being human beings. And um, so when I paint, I love to paint eyes because eyes are mirrors of your soul. The eyes will tell you, will convey to you the feeling of that particular subject, whether that subject is uh, happy or sad, scared, or thinking, just thinking. Sometimes Boulard is thinking about other artists as she paints. She clothed and posed these girls as a tribute to the Impressionist painter Renoir. Other subjects come from her own life. This picture from many years ago shows how Boulard coped with a son suffering from a mild form of autism. And he was running away a lot. And it made me very angry. She didn't paint how things happened, but rather how she felt. I guess the red horse is probably my anger. And the blue boy is probably the little boy that was running away. <laughs> so... Today I laugh about it because, you know, it's a uh, grown man and he's okay and it's fine. But at the time, it was a challenge. Another painting depicts the former Princess of Wales. She started it before the untimely death of Diana. This painting is about a life interrupted. I started the painting because I like Princess Di. She was very pretty and very kind, and everybody loved her. There wasn't, I don't think, a person in the world that didn't love Princess Di. And suddenly, uh, there was this terrible news that she was uh, killed in a car accident just um, before she planned to be married. So I, I, I couldn't finish it. I couldn't finish the painting, and. Uh, I thought about it again later on, and I said maybe I would finish it. But uh, somehow or other, if her life ended, and then the painting should end too. Boulard has only painted a few famous faces, but she enjoys painting people. I like the variety of people's shape and color. I love people. I'm a people person. I really believe that. Like the painter Degas, Boulard admires dancers. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a dancer because I thought they were the most beautiful people to look at, to see in movements. As a child, I, I just loved to, to watch. And where I lived in Paris, there was a dancer in my building who lived there. And um, I just thought it was wonderful. And she was wonderful. They also speak like an artist through their dance, telling something to the audience, to people in general. They also convey messages 
of um, beauty, sadness, happiness. Boulard finds happiness in a variety of styles and doesn't only paint people. I think of landscape as a, as a place to go for a little vacation, a little retreat, uh, a peaceful solitude, quiet. Um, sometimes we can get that from the ocean too. And you go there and you listen to the water hitting the rocks with the waves. And if you go into the woods, you listen to the cracking and the birds and the leaves and the trees. It's like bringing calmness into your soul in effect when you, when you go there in your mind or in painting. This painting allows the artist to return to France whenever she wants to. This painting is taking me back to childhood where my grandmother lived in France and in the fall, which is a beautiful time and the colors were beautiful. And even though I didn't paint it then, I think I painted it like 40 years later, I still feel what I felt then when I look at it now. Even though it was poor and kind of sad, uh, when, I, when, you, when you think back, it's always nicer when you think back, no matter how difficult the time was, and this was a difficult time, it was like right after war and everything, um, but still, it, it's, it's got warmth into the memories. It brings back, you know, someone that I love, you know, that was there. She made many of her creations while working in the corporate world and raising a family in New York City. But she has painted a few canvases since moving to Peru, New York in 2007. One shows the lighthouse on Valcour Island, as seen from her home. When I see this painting, I like the colors that I came about to paint. Reflections of sunsets over the Valcour it gives you these wonderful yellows and pink sometimes. So I, um, I like all of that. The building itself is um, a little bit European in a sense. Just the, the fact that it's there in the woods like that is just very appealing, very pretty to look at. Boulard also finds flowers pretty and thought of Van Gogh when creating this bouquet of tulips. When I paint flowers, I usually feel I'm receiving them. And when I paint them and I'm finished, then I'm giving them you know, whether it's a summer, a summer flower or a winter flower or for a funeral or a wedding, it wouldn't matter. I just feel the flowers is something you give or receive, which is nice too. <laughs> Boulard also paints in abstraction. When you paint an abstract painting, you let your unconscious totally in control. You do an abstract like this, you throw something on and it doesn't look right and it's not balanced, you throw something else on it, then it becomes balanced. It's all about color and balance, especially in abstract. But it, it's fun. And it's um, like, a, like a landscape takes you on a little trip. That's a different kind of a trip. It's almost like, a, like an hallucination kind of a trip, if one can say that safely. Not that I do any of that, but that is my way of having that experience. And this one in particular is done for someone uh, who is colorblind. So they only see certain colors, they only see the, the blues and, the, and the, they don't see the greens and the reds. And so I have to, and they see very well the white and the black. She says she paints in so many different styles because she was never schooled in one. I haven't been trained to go in one particular area in earlier time, in earlier, as many people do. They go to school, they want to become an artist, they have teachers, and teachers guide them into where they feel is best for them. I didn't have this luxury, and that luxury became a different luxury for me, because I was able to experiment on my own and paint in all these various styles that I enjoy very much. 
but I also think that the reason it happened is it's because I find it for me difficult to be staying in one style. I prefer to just let loose. And then a hundred years from now, they'll say, well, she was a loose woman <laughs> with her paintings. She's also generous with them. She's donated paintings to various groups in her local community to share her talent and help with fundraising. I think it's a wonderful way of giving to the community and to have other people inspired by me doing that. I'm doing a painting right now of a little boy from Nicaragua. I'm going to donate that painting to the Rotary Club and they're going to in turn auction it off so that they get the benefit to do what they do with their money that they get. Instead of paintbrushes, Boulard often paints with her hands. She's also put her fingers to work on three-dimensional art. I like to sculpt because it brings me close to the material. It's physical, it's very physical. It's emotional, it's physical, it's intellectual, it's, it's everything because you, you, you're right there with, with, the, with the piece. You can go around it, you can turn it, you can upside down and inside out. She recently gave her new community a chance to see her work at an art opening in the Best Western, the Inn at Smithfield in Plattsburgh, New York. I really enjoy the colors and, and a lot of the, uh, the sense of motion uh, and the characters, they're abstract and yet some are real and that diversity is really good. It's quite an exceptional opportunity, I think, to be able to see this, this range of work uh, by an artist who has chosen to make this area her home. Being an artist, at first, you want to leave something behind. You want to leave a legacy. We look for that recognition, that, that person say, oh, I, wanna, I want that in my house, I want that. I feel for this painting, I like this painting. If you're a great chef and you make a wonderful meal, but then you're gonna freeze it, nobody's gonna be eating it, they would feel terrible. And that's the same thing with an artist. When we paint, we want somebody to wanna to take that and own it. That makes us feel good. That makes us feel like we've done something important. You may learn more about this artist by checking out her website. It's studioedaloo.com.